Welcome to an overview of thrombosis. In this video, we will discuss the factors that promote thrombosis. Over the next few minutes, we will discuss the following take-home points. Thrombosis risk factors include intimal injury, stasis, and hypercoagulability. Intimal injury can occur with trauma and or inflammation. Stasis occurs in situations where arterial or venous blood return is impaired. In hypercoagulable states, the effects of procoagulants overcome the effects of anticoagulants. Let's begin with the endothelial lining of a blood vessel. Let's introduce a break in the lining to simulate intimal or endothelial injury. The first response of the injured endothelium is vasoconstriction. Then, the subendothelial elements are exposed as well as von Willebrand factor. Let's add some platelets. Because endothelial production of prostacyclin and nitric oxide is impaired, platelets become activated and initiate a cycle of adhesion, secretion, and aggregation until the platelet plug is formed and the fibrin clot is laid down. However, in situations where there is stasis or hypercoagulability, the platelet plug and clot continue beyond the limits of what is normal until the blood vessel lumen gets filled up and the clot propagates to form a thrombus. Let's now focus on the first step of Verkau's triad that speaks of endothelial injury. Let's go back to the endothelium and introduce damage. Damage can occur due to commonly expected factors such as surgery and trauma, but also occurs due to the damage caused by invasive cancer or the presence of a vascular catheter. It can be caused by the damage inflicted by inflammatory cytokines or inflammation due to metabolic disorders like diabetes. It can also occur due to toxic metabolites from smoking or drugs. Next, we'll look at stasis. Let's take a look at a blood vessel undergoing a slowing down of blood flow in a simulation of stasis. Stasis can occur with venous insufficiency, heart failure, especially where there might be a hypocontractile left ventricle with stasis, and immobility. Immobility can occur with prolonged bed rest, hospitalization, long cross-country drives, or long-distance flights. Let's focus on the last aspect of Verkau's triad, hypercoagulability. In normal hemostasis, there is a balance of blood clotting factors, or procoagulants, and antithrombotic factors called anticoagulants. In thrombosis, there is an imbalance in favor of procoagulants. This can occur due to procoagulant hyperfunctioning, as can be seen with the factor V Leiden mutation, the prothrombin gene mutation, or with malignant tumors that produce procoagulant factors such as tissue factor. This imbalance can also be caused by anticoagulant deficiencies, as can be seen with antithrombin deficiency, protein C deficiency, and protein S deficiency. In summary, we learned that thrombosis risk factors are intimal injury, stasis, and hypercoagulability. Intimal injury can occur with trauma and or inflammation. Stasis occurs when blood return is impaired, and in hypercoagulable states, procoagulants overpower the function of endogenous anticoagulants. This ends our general overview of thrombosis, where we discuss the individual factors described in Verkau's triad.